Hi guys, I'm Mark Garner from EXP and today you join me in this video where we're gonna break down Right Moves House Price Index report for March. So it's quite a, a detailed report this one. So what I want to do, because I can't remember all the information, having just read it a couple of times. So we're going to jump onto the computer screen. We're going to run through the, the main points and discuss what it means for you as buyers and sellers uh, going forward in the UK property market in 2023. So let's jump across to the computer. Oh, and before that, uh, it would really help me out as well, guys, if you are enjoying this content and the videos that I'm producing, um, I would like you to hit the like uh, icon and subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really does help the channel and to, uh, to be able to get those videos out to other people. It's really good for the YouTube algorithm. So thanks for doing that and let's jump across to my computer screen now. Okay, so here is Right Moves House Price Index. Um, this was released on Monday, the 20th of March 2023. And you've got some kind of headline figures here. Monthly asking price change just below 20 year norm, so it's plus 0.8%. Annual price growth is at 3%. An increase in buyer demand versus same period in 2019 is plus six percent so they go on to say cautious recovery continues but larger home sales lag behind now these are just some of the uh, the headlines i want to go into this in a little bit more detail so we're going to go down to the uh, the overview and kind of go through this so the average price of a property coming to market rises by 0.8 percent or plus £2,906 this month to £365,357. This is below the average monthly rise of 1% seen in March over the last 20 years, reflecting a higher degree of pricing caution by many new sellers than is usually seen at this time of year. The expectation to this caution, or sorry, the exception to this caution is a 1.2% monthly increase jump in the larger home top of ladder sector in contrast in contrast to more modest 0.4 and 0.5 percent respective rises in the first time buyer and second stepper sectors overall new sellers asking prices are now 5800 pound below october 2022's peak with annual price growth continuing to ease and now at three percent the data continues to point to a market on a much more stable footing than many anticipated and cautious transitioning towards uh, the activity levels of a more normal market of 2019 now then go on to uh, say this is Tim Bannister who's Right Moves Director of Science um, of property science should I say the beginning of the spring season uh, see stability and confidence continuing to return to a market as it recovers from a turbulence from the turbulence at the end of 2022 the pace of the market uh, reached an unsustainable level in the last two years and was on track to slow to a more normal level though the speed of this slowdown to more normality was accelerated by the re uh, reaction to September's mini budget while higher mortgage rates rates and economic headwinds raised challenges many potential home movers uh, who were effectively sidelined in the frenetic bidding wars of the last two years will find that a slower pace market gives them time to plan and secure their next move as we enter the traditionally busy spring buying period um, they then go on to say that uh, typical first time buyer type properties, two beds, uh, two bedrooms and fewer are leading a cautious recovery with sales agreed in this sector improving fast. In the last two weeks, agreed sales are just 4% behind the same period in uh, the more normal market of 2019. Uh, however, to put this into context, they are 18% behind last year's exceptional levels. Well, we all know what's happened over 
the last year as we came out of the uh, kind of COVID and the pandemic and the lockdown, everybody was looking for property and it just kind of went crazy. Um, uh, the result of this increase buyer activity means that average asking prices for first time buyer type properties are now uh, remarkably just £500 lower than their peak last year. Given the rising cost of living and increased cost of taking out a mortgage, it's likely that many in this group are getting some support from family or have been able to abide, uh, avoid record rents and saved up a larger deposit by living with parents for longer. Okay, they then go on to say, by contrast and highlighting the current hyper-local market sector differences, sales agreed in the last two weeks in the more discretionary top of the ladder and second stepper home sectors are 10% and 13% behind the same period in 2029 respectively. So basically this report is saying that anything that is first time buyer range, um, we still seeing a good number of inquiries, there's still demand there. First time buyers still wanna get on the market and we all know that first time buyers are what drive the market. However, although they are driving that first time buyer range, um, there is a big slowdown in kind of that second second home, the uh, the three or two to three bed homes kind of properties over and around the two hundred and fifty thousand pound plus, and certainly the the bigger properties out there, the more luxurious properties, the top of market, they are seeing a big reduction um, in the amount of inquiries and uh, and sales agreed. So it's definitely kind of a more cautious market in those areas. Um, but I would be continually more worried if first time buyers were kind of dropping out of the market as well because once the first time buyers do drop out of the market then that suggests that we could be heading for a, a, a bigger crash than uh, probably what we are going to see so it goes on to say however while the modest uh, 0.4 percent rise in average second stepper asking prices reflects this more muted level of activity the 1.2 percent rise in the most expensive property sector appears to be over optimistic given the slow recovery in sales agreed numbers and some sellers in this sector may need to temper their price expectations in order to attract more buyer interest and secure a sale so for some reason people who are in that higher bracket uh, when they're looking at selling the more expensive properties they are still asking more money when putting the properties on the market but we all know it's supply and demand because the demand is not there they do need to be more realistic with regards to the price that they uh, they're going to achieve for that property now some of these buyers may just be testing the market they may not be too bothered uh, about selling the property they may be able to purchase another property without the need to sell that property um, hence because they're in that higher higher end bracket whereas the more uh, middle sector properties they have only risen that 0.4 percent they uh, they are obviously taking on board what the agents are saying to them now that they need to price the property correctly if they want to get enough interest in the property to be able to achieve that sale in a realistic time frame so one contributing factor to larger home sales lagging is a reduction in pandemic driven lifestyle changes the proportion of buyers inquiring to make a more a move over 50 kilometers away from where they live is now 15 percent the same level as 2029 and below its pandemic peak of 18 percent so um we did see a lot of people uh, especially on higher end salaries who were working in larger cities um they wanted to then uh move out to larger properties out side of the cities because they wanted the space they were working from home more they wanted to be able to build those offices in the back gardens or enjoy the back garden during the summer while working from home uh, rather than being in an apartment say in the city uh, in the city centers that has started to change now as people are getting back into the office so that's why that reduction is happening um, I then go on to say mortgage rates have fallen back from their peak last year with average rates for a 15% deposit five year fixed mortgage now 4.65% uh, edging down from last month's 4.75% and October's 5.89%. Uh, though this compares to 2.48% this time last year. So yes, mortgages have risen because of that budget um, that uh, or the mini budget that happened in September 
But even though uh, the Bank of England raised interest rates um, in the uh, the last few days to 4.25%, a lot of lenders had already priced that in. So mortgage uh, prices are still uh, becoming more competitive and are still coming down. If, however, interest rates do rise again, um, which we don't know, they could, they couldn't, uh, then we could see a further increase uh, in interest rates there if they haven't already been priced into what uh, lenders are offering currently. Um, accompanying the uh, the budget announcement, the OBR statement that inflation is likely to reduce more quickly than previously forecast to 2.9% by the end of 2023 is positive news and the Bank of England may temper rate rises and and uh, reduce them more quickly than previously anticipated. However, market conditions are changeable and we will need to see how the mortgage market reacts in the coming weeks. So um, yeah, as you can uh, see that uh, lenders will kind of be looking very closely as to what uh, what the Bank of England is gonna be doing with interest rates there. So I just wanna come down to uh, some more information here. Um, the affordability trends. Uh, the first time buyer monthly mortgage payment is based on uh, the Bank of England data of an average for 90% loan to value, two year fixed mortgages from lenders and the average asking price of a typical first time buyer home, two bedrooms or fewer using the right move house price index. The equivalent monthly rent is calculated using the same property types, uh, two bedrooms or fewer. The affordability to buy a first home is based on the average weekly earnings data set from the ONS multiplied by 4.5 to get the typical maximum that a person can borrow from the lender. The average asking price of a typical first time buy a home is taken from the uh, right move house price index. So looking at this, uh, mortgage typical mortgage payments, although they have come down um, since kind of just before November, it looks like they were peaking up around about 1300 there. Um, and there they, they have come down more towards that 1200 mark and just out of interest rates have been steadily rising as well. So they're looking more around about a thousand pound mark. Um, and uh, the affordability so we've got four times salary two people we're looking at uh, somewhere around about three hundred thousand I would say there and average asking price for a first-time buyer um, you're looking at just under that two hundred twenty five thousand and then four times salary for one person um, and you can see they are somewhere around about a hundred and forty thousand there so they would uh, struggle still I believe to kind of get most um, smaller houses for a first time buyer uh, but certainly somebody that's in a relationship that's a couple they uh, they are looking more up to around about the 250,000 as we speak um, so price and activity trends uh, monthly change in average asking prices so you can see this month it has risen 0.8% um, from being uh, flat in February and the five year asking price trend and it is still on the rise, although we have seen a little bit of a dip over the coming months. There has been more price reductions uh, from some vendors that I've seen in the market, um, but not by massive amounts. Uh, what I believe is they are kind of reducing by 2%, which is the uh, the minimum required for it to kind of get sent back out on the right move email alert. So that's what a lot of agents are kind of advising people to do at the minute to, to bring that interest back into it. And uh, just uh, another uh, chart here, which is quite interesting, average time to secure a buyer, uh, number of days, and this is national. So um, from April last year, it did go all the way down to 31. And then as the year kind of progressed, went all the way up to 62, but it has started to kind of come back down again now. So again, feeding into that, uh, that information that the report's giving that um, some properties on the market now are are taking a little bit longer to sell and people do need to be um, very very careful with how they initially market the uh, the price of the property so that is the report um, I hope you've kind of picked up some information from that you can just see some regional figures here um, but we've kind of already covered that anyway uh, and then everything on the bottom is just to do with the uh, the London boroughs
so that is the report um and uh yeah hope you've gained some insights from that well there you have it guys that is that report broken down in detail for you i hope you're able to kind of take some uh, useful information away from that as to how to go forward if you're thinking about putting your property on the market or even how to kind of reassess if you've already got your property on the market at the moment um, as you can tell from that report things have started to change we've definitely gone from a seller's market last year um, and then that mini uh, that mini budget happened interest rates rose and it did feel the first kind of few weeks up towards the first month that we kind of gone back into COVID and inquiries were very, very thin on the ground. Um, but everybody was then saying, oh, it's all doom and gloom, the housing market's going to crash by 20, 30%. Um, and that still hasn't happened. Yes, there is some softening in the market. And if you are thinking about putting your house on the market or you've currently got your house on the market and you've not getting the amount of interest that you uh, believed you should have done, then the first thing really that you need to be looking at is have you priced the property correctly or are you going to price the property correctly? If you are behind the market and the market is starting to soften and price reductions are happening, you really want to get ahead of that um, because if you're behind it and you're still holding out for that price and the market does continue to soften and come down a little bit, then what's most likely going to happen is you're going to end up reducing your property even further than you really wanted to just to achieve a sale on it. Whereas if you, you can get ahead of that curve slightly and make the property look very competitive um, compared to what else you're trying to sell against in your local market, then you're going to create the demand from buyers because they're going to see it as potentially being a bargain, something that they need to come and view. And all you need is a minimum of two buyers that really like the property and are willing to compete against each other. And yes, you may have priced it at a certain point, but if you get two buyers that really want it that bad, they're going to start bidding against each other anyway. So, yeah, if you do want any more information or you've got any questions with regards on how you should price your property, then reach out to me. Um, you can drop me a message under this video. You can contact me at mark.garner at exp.uk.com. Reach out to me on my social channels. You can contact me on 077 eight nine six four seven two two six as well i'm always here to help you guys going forward and again please do hit that like button for the video and subscribe and hit that notification bell as well it really just helped me out and it helps me to kind of widen my audience and um, that's always good for a local business like me so that's it for me for now uh, again i really do hope you've enjoyed this video and you've taken something away from it and like I said, any questions, reach out to me. But until next time, that's it for now. See you later, guys.